representing the home crowd, the Anglo-Saxons. So the most famous king of the Anglo-Saxons was King Alfred, and the country would have split, been split into various tribes, all paying allegiance to King Alfred, all trying to demonstrate their fighting prowess and keep him with his favour. So today I am dressed as a tribal chieftain. This is the dress of somebody that had money. So, we look at what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a stout pair of leather boots. These things woven around my ankles are known as winnigas. And then I'm wearing a pair of woolen hose. On the top, this is where the protection happens. So the first thing that I'm wearing next to my skin is what we call a gamerson, which is a long, thick, padded, quilted garment that's going to serve two purposes. The first purpose is, when I put the mail on top, that's pretty heavy and pretty uncomfortable. So it's going to give me a certain degree of comfort when wearing it. But more importantly, it is defensive. And it is my last line of defence. So obviously my first line of defence is movement. Get out of the way of the enemy attack. Do not get hit. If I do get hit, I'm wearing mail, but underneath the mail, if a blow comes through and pierces that mail, which a thrusting weapon could do, I've got that thick padded jacket that's hopefully going to turn that lethal blow into a non-lethal blow by dissipating that force, that energy, away from my vital organs. So the mail itself would have been made of iron and it comprises of hundreds and sometimes even thousands of interlinking rings painstakingly joined together by hand to produce this protective item. So I'm going to get in here to demonstrate how effective it is. If you just give me a nice slice, so no matter how hard she cuts and she slices, she is never going to slice through that mail. And even today, butchers in butcher shops wear mail gloves to protect their hands while they cut the meat. Where it's less effective, and this is what I've got to be careful of, is a thrusting weapon. So she gives me a good thrust, okay? She gets into a chink and she twists and she can tear it, continues driving that through. It's not going to stand up to a thrust. Also not great against a well-positioned arrow or a spearhead, so there are weaknesses. Now the only kind of plate armor that I would be wearing, and I stress, it would only be the ultra-rich that would be able to afford, to, to afford a helmet like this. Now we only have five surviving Anglo-Saxon helmets in the UK, and two of them are a stone's throw from here. So this is what we call the Coppergate helmet. This was found in a well in 1982 and is now housed in the Yorkshire Museum. But if you want to see one that's even closer, we have one in the early war section on the second floor of the museum, which is called the Pioneer Helm. And obviously, this is a pretty important piece of kit, whether it's against a spear or indeed a shield and a sword, it is going to give my head, that vital area, a really good level of protection. So, weapon. I today have chosen to go with the noble spear, probably the oldest weapon known to mankind. Originally, effectively, a sharpened stick. We'd have had flint heads, brass heads, copper heads, right up to iron and obviously later steel heads. Very, very effective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using, obviously, the thrust. Distance is my friend. I can also slice with that very, very effectively. I've got the stave, right? That's really good to be used defensively. And I can also use the other end rather like a club. So it's a, a multifaceted weapon, really, really useful. So. How is that going to fare against what you're wearing and what you're using to fight with? Well, as you can see, Nanny has left me very little to talk about. You would be a right in mistaking us both. We both look very, very similar. I am also wearing a lot of woolen hose, my winnigans. I have two layers. I have my garrison. <laughs> Lots of peas. I have my garrison and I also have this woolen uh, jerky over the top and I've got my mail on. I will point out to everybody here that I am wearing the full steel mail, whereas Danny is wearing aluminium. <laughs> Slightly lighter, but, but, he is very, very swift, very, very nimble, regardless of being weighed down by mail. Now, contrary to popular belief, Viking helmets did not have horns on. Okay, I'm just going to dispel that myth for you now. Vikings did have drinking horns, a plenty, but that is a different show. So I will talk mainly about helmets. Now, 
for cutting and for slashing and for thrusting. Contrary to popular belief, this was just as deadly as your samurai katana, which you can see over there. Now, we've got mail protecting both Danny and I, but if I go for a limb, that's going to chop through it like ni a hot knife through butter. Okay, very sharp, very dangerous. And I have another weapon. Yes, another weapon in my hand, which is this, the shield. Now this, admittedly, is a smaller shield than your typical war shield. This is a dueling shield. But my shield, as well as being defensive, can be used offensively. I can easily, with this teeth removal device, take out Danny's rather lovely dashing smile with one blow. This was protecting me, but also was a way to open up my enemy for a cutting or slashing attack. Now just quickly before we move on and show you what we're trying to do to one another, I am talking about dueling. Often, battles would be thousands of people. We have a very limited budget here. <laughs> so, in this case we are honouring the duel. And there were two types of dueling in Viking society. The home gun, which had a series of rules. It had marshals, it had seconds. It would be done in a ring-shaped arena. And it probably wouldn't have been a fight to the death. It was probably to settle a dispute. But then, you have the Ein Vigi. Now the Ein Vigi had no rules at all. You would go off into a quiet clearing with you and your enemy, and you would settle your dispute even to the death. It was truly about honour. So in this case, I can imagine that this Saxon and me are probably having a duel of sorts. I'm going to pass them over to Danny, and he's going to explain in that first section of fighting what we were trying to do to one another. Okay, so as I said before, you've got to look at the weapon systems that the combats have chose to use. So here, distance is my friend. I have got a long weapon, and the idea that I'm going to be trying to employ is keep her at distance. If she tries to smother me, which she probably will, do not allow that. Keep that point on target. If she gets what we call in distance, I am in serious trouble. So we go from that second section. So I'm going to actually hold the spear in a quite unconventional sense. So more like a two-handed sword. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is what we call a feint. I'm going to get her to try and lift her shield. And then I'm going to swing for the legs. Ah! Come in for the head! Now from here I'm using my shield defensively. He's opened himself up. I'm going to go for a nice big thrust, even with a helmet on. I'm going to see if I can get into his eyeball. Oh, so step out of the way. Remember what I said, movement is the primary defence. The weapon is there just to back it up. Now, flipping the spear around, trying to take her head off with this sharp edge. There! Using both the sword and the shield defensively, I do what is known as a tactical retreat. Running away. No, no, shield, no, 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 it's a tactical retreat. So now we've got to measure each other, rather like boxers in the first round, sizing each other up. So what I'm going to do now is literally invite an attack, see what she does, try and goad her into moving first. What I want to do is I want to move that sharp, pointy thing out of the way. So I'm going to use my shield, knock it out of the way, side for a bit. Okay, now she's exposed her cheeks, so we're going to thrust, disengage the other side. Now from here, notice my shield is still up. I'm not letting it drop down here, it's no good here. It's going to be up here. I've got the sword, and I'm now going to bind this out of the way and go in for a cut on the top of his head. Oh. Ah, now I can use that stave in a nice, strong, strong position. Now you saw me earlier using this offensively, smacking him in the stomach, squeezing him enough that I might have advantage. However, there is a multitude of other things I can do, and from this place I could... Oh! <laughs> Right, I'm not having that. I 
think we should have a rematch. What we'll do is we'll fight again, but I'm not going to let you get away from that last move. We want to see an eventual winner, don't we? Yes? Yeah! Right, just by a show of hands or a big cheer. Who is your money on today? If you're supporting the lightly armoured, nimble, quick, local tribesmen, myself, the Anglo Saxon, please cheer now! Yeah! Oh, I think I know where this is going. If, however, our hardest nails, Viking shield maiden, with the shield and sword, is going to try out. Show your appreciation now! Yeah! Let's see what happens. I like being the underdog. You ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs>